Okay, so we're gonna be registering two SIP phones to that session manager that you have for lab. And pretty much when you register the SIP phone, session manager stores two pieces of information when the phone registers. The first piece of information that session manager saves is the SIP URI, which normally it happens to be the extension and the domain, the user. So it saves the SIP URI that the user is currently using. And the second piece of information that session manager stores is the location, which happens to be the IP address of the phone. It's because of those two pieces of information that when you dial a phone that's registered to session manager, you don't need to do anything for that call to be routed because session manager simply proxies the request to that IP address. And then you don't need to configure any routing for that call to happen. Remember, we saw this before, no need to see it again. Just remember that the call between those two SIP phones that you're gonna be calling today, it's gonna happen via SIP register routing. And later when you connect, not today, but tomorrow when you connect the labs together, that's gonna be via network routing policies. Because in that case, the destination is not gonna be a user profile in your session manager. Okay, let me just move on. All of these slides are kind of the same. Page seven reminds you the, the answer to the question. What determines whether session manager will use network routing policies or SIP register routing? Session manager checks the repository to see if the call it party, you know, the destination, the destination. has a user profile. Page eight has a Sample of trace SM, we're gonna be using that tomorrow, very first thing in the morning. Uh, hmm, maybe today, we'll see, we're doing pretty, pretty good, pretty well. What check does session manager make to determine the type of routing to be used? Uh, we've said it a lot of, a lot of times by right now. Profile. It checks for a communication <laughs> profile, yeah. Your profiles, I'm against profiles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, list the steps performed in race routing in the correct order. Let's see if you're able to get this one right. Yeah. So which one you think it should be the first one? B, right? Communication yeah. profile is created. Then A. A, A, the phone needs to register. Then C, C, D. C yeah, and D. And we'll talk about the SDP, stands for Session Description Protocol. That's the protocol where we have find all of stuff related to telephony. Same. Session Description oh. Protocol. Oh. It's within that protocol that you get to see the codec that's gonna be used within that call and some other information that we'll see later. Okay, this is gonna be the lab. You're gonna configure two SIP phones with those extensions. The X, now it's just one digit. So if you're lab one, it's one. If you're lab two, it's two. So if you're lab three, the two extensions would be 3201, 3202. If you're lab four, 4201, 4202, okay? Okay, creating the SIP user. So you've been here before, manage users, uh, user management, manage users. The only thing is that so far we haven't assigned a communication profile to the users and that's what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna assign an extension number to the user and a password so that the user can register the SIP phone. So that's all gonna happen because the phone is gonna send a register message to session manager with the information that you configure in the user profile. That's gonna be extension number, domain, we don't see it here, but domain as well, and the password. How you do it? You go to user management, and again, we saw this before. Remember that in, use, in, in manage users, you could create not only end users, but also administrators, remember? Right. This time we're gonna create an end user that has a communication profile uh, with a device associated to it. Okay, 
So the identity tab for these users are exactly the same as the identity tab that you already configured for administrators. There's nothing new in the identity tab. Because remember, the identity tab has what? Last name, first name, and login name, and that's it. For end users, the login name is just gonna be the identifier of the user in the database. It's completely unique, but the user will never use that login name to log into System Manager because it's an end user. It's not an administrator. Now, when you go to the communication profile, here under communication profile password is where you set up the password that you want the user to, to use. Similar to the security <coughs> code for an IP, for an ASP.NET 3 form. Then you're gonna specify, actually, you know what? Let me do it with one of, I think I have a user in lab one, so I'm gonna do it with one of the users in lab one. Let's see. We have tons of users now. Let's use this one, Nestor Gonzalez. I'm gonna edit mine. And communication profile, notice that the identity tab is already set up. Communication profile, I know that I haven't set up a communication profile password. This makes you think that you configure one, but you haven't. You, in this case, you will need to click on edit. If it's a new user, it'll be just like this. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a password, it's a numeric password for the security code of the phone. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna go with one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Easy to remember, and that's the one that the exercise suggests. Now, next thing I need to do is create a communication address for this user. That's gonna have the extension number and the password. Something that's gonna get you probably one time is that you need to create a new communication address, but not you don't need to create a new communication profile. Notice that we already have one communication profile by default set to primary. I'll talk about the multiple communication profiles in a minute. But what you wanna do here is have a new communication address. And this is where you're gonna go with the extension number of the phone. Now, notice that the type of communication address could be, well, there are a lot of different types. If it's an Avaya phone, you wanna go with Avaya C. If it's a non-Avaya phone, another vendor, but still a SIP phone, you go with other SIP. And then the other options are for some integrations that Session Manager has. Yeah. Okay. I would say that most of the time it's gonna be Avaya SIP or other SIP. In this case, it's an Avaya phone, we're gonna go with Avaya SIP. And now I need to specify the extension number of the user. Easy, notice that I'm not, I'm, I have no need to specify a dial plan. I just go, go ahead and right away specify an extension number. You're gonna be creating 1201, 1202, so I'm gonna go with 1203. Add, very important, converge1.com. That's the complete identifier of the user. And another thing that might get you one time is don't forget to click on this add. If you forget and you keep working, you don't want to add it. So click on that add. And I have it. Now, next thing. Now we have a session manager profile. Remember, we didn't see this field before because we didn't have a session manager. If I go to the session manager profile, this is the place where I assign the user with its primary session manager. If we have another session manager in the same life, we could go with a secondary, and those will be the two session managers in the core. And remember that under survivability server, you could have a branch session manager. So those are the three points of survivability that a SIP phone could have. Now, some parameters that could be interesting here, maximum simultaneous devices is set to one right now, but in SIP, you could s register up to 10, in this case, 10 phones to the same extension. Right. Yeah. And all of those phones will ring if you call that extension number. Yeah. Now, when you pick up the phone, one of them, uh, the other sessions are canceled, and only the one that was uh, picks up first. Yeah, the Wait. one that picks first is the one that's going to be active. Yeah. So those could be all sorts of different in, uh, endpoints. So it could be a iPhone app, a, all yeah. kinds of different yeah. uh, devices. Yeah. Those could be different C endpoints, li different C uh, type of endpoints. Yeah. Now, what we're gonna be doing here at the beginning is that we're gonna configure these Avaya phones as if they were dummy SIP phones, like simple SIP phones, because we don't have GM, uh, CM jet in the picture. 
So notice that there is no CM here. So we're gonna configure these Avaya fonts as if they were non-Avaya fonts. This is how you would configure a non-Avaya font with no CM in the picture. So all I need to do at this point is specify a home location, which in this case is lab one. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create that profile. And now that user has a user profile with that extension with the domain and also I specified that the session manner of that user is going to be session manner in lab one. If I want to test things, I mean you're going to test with your phones but I could always open up my 1x communicator and let me actually show it to you because maybe in the future you'll configure 1x communicator as well. Look at this. I'm gonna go to settings, and it's right now set to zip. The one X communicator could be an H three three client or a zip client. So my extension number was what twelve o three. My password was one two three four five six. I'm gonna remove this just to show you that I need to add this entry server list, and it's asking me for the proxy server. What would you put there? Proxy server. The S M one hundred. The IP address of your session manager, but not the management one, but the one yes, of the SIP signal interface. Because which, it's encrypted. Uh, yeah, but remember that the session manager, the front door of session manager for SIP messages it's is SM the SM100. SM100. Right. So that's going to be the 10.9. The I don't recall where you set the station to use uh, transport type, TLS or TCP. In the station, you don't say that. You do it. What do you mean? You mean in the in user the, profile? Yeah, in the user profile. What yeah, you don't need to specify that in the user profile. You do it as a listening port in the SIP entity associated to session manager. So right now, this session manager, remember it here in routing, yeah. SIP entities, they could they said that this session manager is listening for traffic on these ports, uh, okay. these protocols, this domain. So you can't say as an admin what kind of protocol it uses. Uh, what kind of port? More like the kind of protocol, because protocol is either CCP or TLS. But the port, something that you could change. Maybe you don't want to use the default 5061, but something else. But you don't. You can't affect it any way. Setting up the user, uh, the communication profile. You could turn yeah. off TLS listening if they were a tight, secure job. If they wanted everything. In the com profile. Secure, I guess. You could change. No, you have to. You need to have this open. But yeah. Per user, you don't specify the port and um, protocol. You just do it in session manner, so they listen for traffic in these ports and okay. this protocol and going to the specific domain. If that customer wanted to use only secured uh, endpoints, what yeah. would prevent the end user from registering TLS? Or TCP, I'm sorry. The client software, yeah. If you have an option to do it otherwise. Yeah. No, I don't get it. Oh, I don't understand. If the user wanted to use the unsecured... Um, in the 1X, you mean? Yeah, in 1X, they could change ah, their settings. Yeah, but then you just go and remove that option from listening ports, and they never register via TCP. Okay. Okay, so coming back to the... Let's see, user, not user. Where, where was I? Yeah, am I? 1X communicator. So TLS, and now the port... It's 5061, right? Notice that it says port is optional. If not specified, it's going to be the, using the default 5061. Okay, but I'm setting it up. Now, domain. I, have, I had it there, but I wanted to point out that it's very important to configure a domain because this user is not only extension 1203, but it's 1203 at converse1.com. You're going to see when you configure your phones that you'll have to set up a domain as well. Okay, let's see. Let's try to register. We'll see. I'm in. Now, the fact that I was able to register via TLS that easy 
shows me that I'm using demo certificates in this lab. And true is that we're not gonna deal with certificates in this administration class, but I know I'm using demo certificates because I didn't have to inter interchange certificates between system manager, session manager at all, right? That just happened magically. But in real life, if you don't wanna use demo certificates, you need to change the identity certificate of session manager. And if you wanna relate this phone with CM for features, you need to also deal with its own certificates in CM as well. But we're not gonna deal with that here. That's fine, I have now my user registered to session manager. Let me go back to the lab and point out some extra information that's gonna be useful. Page 21 talks about multiple communication addresses. So notice that I only have right now one in my profile, but I could have more than one communication address in my profile and I could log in as either one of those and receive calls for both. So what this is saying is that, for example, here in, in the example on the slide, this user could be registered as 4001, but if someone calls him at 4999, even though he's not active in 4999, Sashimar is still gonna proxy the request to the user. So what this means is that pretty much Sashimar checks in what zip URI you're active, and it proxies the request to the zip URI where you're active, even though someone is trying to reach you in another, to, in another zip URI. Okay, so that's multiple communication addresses. And something that's completely different is multiple communication profiles. If you create another communication profile, uh, that second communication profile is completely unrelated to any communication addresses in the in the previous communication profile. Let me actually show it to you here. If I go back to my user, right now my user is using this primary communication profile. It's a, if I create a new communication profile, which is this new button that I told you that I didn't want you to press if you go there, it's gonna ask you for the name for this new communication profile, let's call it secondary, just because the, the, the first one is called primary. And notice that under the secondary communication profile, there is no communication address, there is no session matter profile, there's nothing. So this is 